Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today, this one is around the Circuit de Catalunya, Spain, Barcelona. I think the uh, F1 is being held there today. Actually, it is today, Sunday, yeah. And um, I've actually got two of my good mates in the race today. We've got Liam Prince, is in 10th, and we've got uh, John Sheehan as well. It's uh, just looking up the board. I think he joins in late, to be fair, and just gets in it for the race in here. You can't actually see him on the board yet. Maybe 23rd, 24th. Um, had a qualifying lap. Uh, I think it was about a 47 is what I got. Uh, first time you guys are seeing me in the Audi. And to be fair, it was the first time I've been around this track in the Audi as well. So 47 wasn't the best. I think I got it down to a 145 during the race. And um, it's going to be an interesting one, guys. So, as you can see, we'll just start off on the bit of a warm-up now. Making our way towards the line. You see the cars ghosting. Uh, basically, when you start in a certain course of competition, it gets you to line up in a, a double file. And... Then basically you have to hold your speed just before the line. As soon as the lights go green, boom, you're gone. Uh, you can set it in some of the different servers. So you can do a whole lap of warm-up. Or you can just do just the last corner. Sometimes there's pits involved. Great simulator. I'm sure you guys know by now. So, and away we go. Now what I found with the Audi is it's got great acceleration from these starts. Like really great. So I managed to actually just pull up just behind the Lexus a little bit. Decide to go to the inside line. I feel like on T1, the inside is usually the safest place to be. Just in case anyone slides out and kind of makes contact with you on the other side. Now, like I say, first race in the Audi. So I've decided to be a little cautious, giving up a couple of positions on T1. But I'd rather do that than take any damage. Managed to get alongside... And to take the inside again, trying to hold my position and slot in behind this Ferrari. I think I just make it in front of the matte black Mercedes. Onto the outside, leaving enough space in case the Mercedes wants to make a dive bomb, but he doesn't. Quite at the back now, just watching the Lexus and the Ferrari now do a little bit of battle. They have a touch, the Lexus doesn't hold it, goes off to the right. The Ferrari, it doesn't seem like it's impeded him too much. I have to touch the brakes a little bit more than usual coming into this right-hander. And you can see that Lambo now all over my tail. So, cashing in the slipstream. Catch up to the Ferrari a little bit. He brakes a little bit early. I managed to... Oh! And there's a collision. It look, let's have another look at that. So what happens there? It looks like I brake, try to go around the Ferrari on the inside. I think the Lambo had the exact same idea. Mr. Berry, I believe it was. Sends me spinning all the way to the back. Now, I actually get behind my good friend, Mr. Sheehan. And I believe I've gone all the way down to 22nd. Narrowly avoiding the Ferrari as I rejoin the track. He loses it coming onto the grass. So I have to avoid him around on the left now. I managed to try and get the power on. Now, guys, this is where the race starts. Basically, I've got in my head now. I want to get back to 7th at least. Um my qualifying position and if that happens it'll be a good race chaos as we sit behind john just there in the lambo he did a great way of avoiding him i just managed to miss him but go around him on the outside and then managed to duck all the way to the inside and slingshot by two cars will i make it up to the jag as well it looks like i'm gaining on him i've got a better exit from that last corner and i've got the inside for t1 Managed to slot it in right in front of the Jag, park it on the apex so that he can't get by. And then continue on to my race. The Jag is a little bit, a little bit skittish. And the Ferrari behind him, the same. So, I like on this left, uh, coming into this right hander, I like to use all the track on the left brake just after I get under the grid. Try and trail brake it around in second. So I can really get the power out into this next little straight before we get onto the left hander see the mclaren in sight so he's our next uh next opposition a bit of a difficult track this uh catalonia to be fair we this 
little chicane here is a tricky one. I always seem to run right, wide onto the right using all of the curb, but it's not really a cut track as long as you've got those two wheels on the curb. Whichever two wheels you want, inside, outside, as long as it's two wheels. Breaking a little late for the hairpin now. Sends me like a little wide and have to hit over the bump. Engaging the traction control and slowing yourself, slowing myself down so that I can't really get the acceleration out of that section. Very tight, twisty last part of this course. You've got to really be on it, and rather than oversteer, I'm oh, not oversteer, rather than understeer into some of the corners, you just need to really make sure you get your apexes right. You can be flat out through this last corner. It feels like the car's going to give way, but nine times out of ten, as long as you've got your line right, you're all good and onto the straight again. I think those last couple laps, we're, we're now running into the 146s. So as the race goes on, we kind of get the time a little bit lower. I like to try and clip two wheels just on the inside of those little sausages sometimes. I feel like it gives me a little bit better, better angle on the apex. But as you can see, I'm still a bit hesitant getting back on the accelerator coming out of that long sweeping right-hander. So we're up into 16th now from 22nd, so we've already made a few spots back up. And as you can see up ahead, that's actually Liam Prince. I'll link his channel in the description, but he's gone wide on that corner. We're on comms, and he actually goes a little wide on this corner, giving me the inside just to pull alongside him now. Very nice of him moving to the right to make sure we don't have a collision. And I just managed to slot in front of him here with a bit of a defensive line up this next chicane. Liam's going so much faster as it goes now as well. It's becoming real racing between me and him. A little bit skittish on that right-hander. Onto the back straight. Liam's actually catching me under braking into this hairpin. Very close now. Watching for the Porsche, I think it was, on the right if he rejoins the track. But what we're going to do now, guys, like I say, I want that seventh place. We're going to hunt. So we're after the McLaren up ahead now. There's a nice little pack there. Hopefully they'll be fighting a little piece, which gives us the chance to just maximize our time and try and get a couple of uh, clean laps in. Back onto the start finish straight now. And it looks like that was a 147 round there. The times aren't gonna matter too much with all this uh, traffic going on. You can't really take the ideal line on every corner if you're trying to overtake. Use as much as you can on the left hand side there. Sometimes getting onto the green will actually impair your braking just a little piece. And it looks like the battle up ahead has caused them to slow down a piece there. Two abreast going into that corner. The McLaren seems to be catching and it looks like actually one of them has made the position. The Ferrari still just in front of the McLaren. And we seem to be catching them corner by corner. So I'm going to have to look now at making my move somewhere soon. Those two fighting again into the left-hander gives me the opportunity to get a better run out of that corner. And to be fair, it looks like I'm going to go for the inside. I've decided not to. Maybe I didn't have enough space. Try and actually get a better run out of this next chicane here. Which works well. I get up alongside the McLaren. Manage to hold the inside onto the right-hander slot just back in front of him and just have enough speed to keep it on the straight he's gone to go for the uh, early inside but doesn't quite make it under braking I still give him a little bit of space just in case but he's a very considerate and manages to actually hold back now it looks like I've got the Ferrari now in sight ah Mr. D. Berry the guy that we had the instant with at the very beginning causing me to have this epic comeback race Seems like he spanned just back there. He, I think he's going to drop down to about 18th now. So sat right behind the Ferrari and on the exit of this corner. I seem to get a better run onto the main straight. Looks like I'm catching him with the slipstream. Pull out. Decide to hold the inside line. Don't give him the opportunity to move across the track and squeeze me. Just get in front of him, move just over. He moves over a bit more, giving me a bit more space. He's got a better run into the first corner, but I park it on the apex in the second, allowing me to hold it for the right-hander and throwing off his line just a little piece. I believe that's me now up into 10th. Don't mind the uh, 
the leaderboard there, guys. Sometimes it takes a little while to adjust because I think it takes it splits around the track. So say the track split into four, it waits until the car parts passes, sorry, one of those splits, and then it will update. But at least I believe that's how it works. Sat the sat behind the McLaren now, and he actually looks a little bit squiggly. I don't know if it's because he's pushing to try and get past the Ferrari, or if it's just just his general driving style. Either way though, I'm going to have a look at the inside, realise I can't quite get in there, so break it out early, and then just try and correct and get as much speed as I can back onto the straight. But as you see, going in for the inside there, not having the ideal line, I really lost a little bit of time on the straight there. Try and catch him under the brake, the Ferrari's actually gone wide and the McLaren's actually gone shallow, which has allowed my little mistake there on the hairpin to, um, to not fall too far back from him. So what we're going to try and do again here, I think, is get a clean exit onto this last corner onto the straight and then see if there's anything that we can do on the straight, maybe using the slipstream to pass them down the start finish. So up into 11th, sorry, it's my, as, I, as I think I said 10th before. The Ferrari's gone wide, so the McLaren decides to bomb it on the right hand, the inside of the Ferrari. But I don't think he expected me to have such a good exit as well, and I managed to just get alongside him for T1. Now, you've seen this move been done a couple of times now. It's one of my favourite overtaking opportunities. Break it hard down onto the inside, and then just slow the pack up. You can, you can slow it down onto the inside of the apex, and basically use your car as a defensive, a defensive tool. Try to stop him getting the cut back and cut him back on the inside once you come back out onto the outside line. So you want to go inside to inside, which is a bit a bit counterintuitive and feels a lot slower, but it's it does help the defensive aspect if they try and pass. So that's me up now into ninth. Two more positions until I can regain my qualifying position. And I've actually got a bit of a clear track now, so hopefully I can put some time in and see if I can catch these guys up ahead. They seem to be a good 3-4 seconds ahead now. I'm not going to do it like that. With that little bit of oversteer there. Kicking out into my favourite chicane, as you guys know. Onto the back straight. Usually trying to break just around the 100 mark here. Still don't have a perfect break point on this. I don't drive Catalonia too much. Even though it is a very nice track. Uh, it has a little bit of everything in Catalonia. You've got some of the, the twisty chicanes, some of the long, fast corners. And that T1, T2 to T3 is one of my favourites. So we're actually catching on the Aston. I believe the Aston's a red card from what I can see on this. So he's still an amateur driver and spent too much time on the game. Don't get me wrong, he's no slouch. But uh, on this game, it's all about consistency, guys. As soon as you have a couple of little errors, it takes seconds off of your time. And that's all it takes for some of these consistent drivers to actually get straight by you. So using as much of the track as I can on the left. Cutting in perfectly for that right-hander there. And then for this next right-hander, you actually want to cut a little bit more left than I did just then. Um, and it gives you just a little bit of a flatter corner to accelerate out on. So you can really make up a lot of time accelerating out up onto this under this bridge. Breaking at the bridge, down into second. Bit of trail breaking around this corner especially. You really want to kind of break it to about halfway of the corner if you can. Bleed off your speed nicely. It's not all about mashing the brakes, guys. A little bit of oversteer around that little hairpin there. Sometimes I feel like dropping down into first is not the right idea. But we'll see. It's uh, always dependent on, on what's happening. Again, my favourite corner causing me issues as usual. Keeping it in fourth here so that I can just foot flat and try and avoid one of those gear changes on the on the way out. And are we going to make a move onto the Aston? I pull over to the inside, but back out of it. Don't really want to go for a dive bomb under braking. The guy's been very respectful, so I don't really want to uh, throw that his way. But it has let him know that I am there. If he's checking his mirrors, he may be a little bit worried. And he's actually gone a little piece wide. Narrowly avoid uh, touching him. And knocking him further off onto the track. But managed to just snake by. And back into the, the last chicane. Foot flat now guys. Onto the straight. And I believe now. We are actually up into 7th. So mission accomplished so far ladies and gentlemen. We have made it back to our qualifying position. After 
after God knows what has happened this race. Now, I believe it is only a nine lap race, 15 minutes roundabout. Got best time there, 146.5. But now I have some open track. Few seconds behind the car in front. And I mean, I don't think I'm going to get sixth, but let's have a look. That's the McLaren up in front there. Quite a bit of track distance. It's going to take a miracle or something to happen to really catch a little bit of oversteer there, but caught it on the way in. I'm really pushing this lap now, guys. I mean, making one place up from my qualifying after all that madness that happened earlier would really be, uh, would really be something special for me. Pushing into the left, right. I think that's a green McLaren, and I think he took it all right. Got a nice line through that corner now, managed to get onto the uh, accelerator early through the centre section of the corner. And braking just before the 100. Cutting the curb a little piece on the left. Runs a tiny bit wide on the right. Drop it in second to get the car to turn in. Got a, oh, it's a Ferrari actually, guys. I'll be really cautious on the accelerator there because you don't want to um, you don't want to understeer the car on any of these corners as you come out. Some of them, especially with the crest, are very difficult. As soon as you touch the accelerator, the car starts to understeer and then it's game over. If you want to brake, let the car turn, and then get back on the accelerator. Foot flat coming up to the line here now, and we actually get a 145.9 if I remember correctly. 145.9. 145 something was the pulse it is time for this race. And I th feel like now we're on the last lap. Uh, eight lap race, so I do apologise for that earlier. Still in seventh. We're a good, still a good two seconds behind old, old Pape in the Ferrari. Um, I don't think we're fifth is nowhere near. I think we're like 17 seconds. I think I saw pop up there earlier. Yeah, 17 seconds from fifth to sixth. But I can tell that I'm catching Mr. Pape. So I just keep my foot planted, try and go for a quick lap on this one, and just hope that he can kind of see me in the rear view and maybe that makes him make an error. But we'll see if that happens or not. Coming into my favourite left-right chicane, and Pape's actually, he's actually gone wide. He's had to cut across the gravel. Now that's not only slowed him down for these next corners, but also has done his tyres in. He's going to probably have a little bit less grip. As he does slides a little bit wide, we door-to-door -door contact gives me just enough to pull ahead of him. I keep the inside line, try and hold defensively now for this next hairpin. Yep, as I believe, I think his tyres are still dealing with some of that gravel from it. He slides a little piece wide, giving me the position, and as long as I don't mess up now, guys, I think that's sixth. So as the race would have gone, seventh to 22nd, up to sixth, maybe more than 22nd, I think it was 22nd. What a great race. We're on the last lap now, coming around onto the final corner. You can see the yellow smoke on the cockpit view. And across the line, and we do make it into sixth. What a great, le got a great race. I think Liam turned up for 13th in that race. And John all the way up into 17th from, from way back. So thank you guys for uh, watching the video. Hope you're doing well, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.